Okay, I can't stress this enough. This was not a stunt. It was a shift in capturing reality. A new language of perception where you can capture the dynamic physical world in all its glory. And they did it in a way that just hadn't been done before. But I think this is interesting, right? So this is the 120 camera, like still camera rig that y'all essentially built to do that iconic bullet time shot. And then is it true that all the, there are certain background sequences where these are some of the first, you know, instantiations of photogrammetry or yeah. reality capture yeah. on the silver screen. How did that go about? Did you go to like SIGGRAPH and find a wild Paul DeBevick and see his like, you know, PhD thesis film or like yeah. how did how did all of that come about? The problem uh, at that time was it had to be divided between what you could do in the foreground with the actors and what everything else was. And mm -hmm. we still, you know, had options like photographing things as panoramics as, or with motion control systems, robotic mm -hmm. camera systems. But at that time, my colleagues, they were leading edge thinkers in graphics, were hearing about some other research going on in university. So at that time, we looked around the world at experiments in universities and other things, because so these ideas, you know, they're not necessarily lightning strikes in a bottle. They're usually, there are people around the world, right, that are starting to put some things together and starting to put together, mm -hmm. um, you know, experiments and uh, media labs of a kind, I guess, early stage computer graphics labs, you know, is where you might find some of this. So yeah, we found uh, a number of let's call it like uh, PhD students and, uh, you know, Paul DeBevick over in Berkeley was close in the neighborhood. And so we were looking at uh, some of his work. Yes, they were thesis films, right, that he was putting together. And that was a start point, at least with our relationship with Paul and his amazing students who wound up becoming, you know, very accomplished in, in their own right across the years. That was our first thought, right, was to essentially move towards an image-based rendering approach. First time it was experimented with for movies, I think, uh, amongst other things in in those days. So those that was the foreground and the background plan. And uh, yeah, over time that, that got deeper. First Matrix, especially when you were making it, this is like right around Jurassic Park, right? So this is perhaps the first time people had seen like a CG dino, like a CG character. 